I think one of the key issues in, that economists have to face up to today is their responsibility for the recession and their responsibility for the failure to put together coherent policies to get us out of recession. I think the fundamental problem derives from the very core of economic theory. We tend to assume that there is, in the best of all possible worlds, with perfect competition and no market imperfections, an automatic tendency towards full employment. And that tendency is just interrupted by shocks or imperfections, and if we remove the shocks and imperfections, all will be well. And therefore, policies, for example, of, of expenditure by governments may tend to reinforce these imperfections to delay their removal and therefore perpetuate the recession. Therefore, we advocate policies to make the market more competitive, to have structural reforms and so on, exactly the sort of rhetoric that we're seeing in Europe today. What we fail to face up to if there's only one sound theoretical foundation for this proposition, and that's the Arrow de Brer model. It's the only one. And what we also face up to is that de Brer himself, together with Montel and Sonnenschein, demonstrated that there could be no argument whatsoever that an economy would tend towards this equilibrium. It just doesn't happen. And therefore, the de Brer Montel Sonnenschein theorem should be taken on board as the fundamental critique of the idea that the economy tends towards full employment. The next point we really should take on board is that the level of output is determined by expenditure, and expenditure depends upon the availability of finance. We tend to obscure this by always looking at net financial balances, which seem to be the same as savings and investment in the Arrow de Brer model. But in fact, Gross flows of finance are much more important than net flows. You can have an economy, for example, in which the balance of payments is equal to zero, but is which is heavily involved in international intermediation. Now, failing to take on board the role of finance in determining the level of expenditure and consequently output has led to disastrous interpretations of the financial crisis. For example, Bernanke has argued that it was due to global imbalances, to excess savings in China, reducing the rate of interest uh, in the United States and causing excess liquidity. But if you look at gross flows, five times as much money flowed into the United States from London alone than from China, and ten times from the Eurozone. The Eurozone was a significant financier of the American boom recycling American deposits back into the American market and funding the uh, shadow banking system and the uh, investment in subprime mortgages. Then if we turn to the European Union, it is a financial problem which we should be trying to solve, to reorganize the structure of finance and the ability of governments and institutions to spend. That can only be done within the Eurozone if we're willing to build the financial institutions appropriate to a single currency. We haven't got them now, and that's why we're in the mess we're in. So, forget the automatic tendency towards full employment. Remember that finance matters. Remember that gross flows of intermediation are hugely important in the international economy. And the only way to solve our current problems is to get the financial institutions right in those terms. We economic theorists are responsible for putting that sort of framework together.